Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The wheel is one of the most important inventions of humans. In fact, it is considered to be among the first inventions of mankind. The first wheel was an extremely crude object. It was made from a block of stone shaped as a circle. This was soon replaced by wooden wheels that were cut from tree logs. This was done to reduce the weight of the wheel and hence wooden wheels were much easier to roll. Modern wheels have come a long way from these ancient wooden and stone wheels. We moved from heavy stone wheels to lighter wood wheels to make the wheels even lighter, wheels with spokes were made. But these wheels had an issue with slipping, so rubber treads were added to prevent that. With the vehicles getting more heavy, the wheels also had to be much stronger and durable. The wheels were also expected to be much easier to rotate with an external force and also be able to coast for a longer distance with no external force. For these reasons, modern wheels were invented. This is also why modern tires look much different than older generations of wheels. In spite of the various changes the wheels have undergone, there was still something holding them back from becoming an ideal wheel. This is called rolling resistance and this will be our topic for today. Rolling resistance is denoted by the equation force equals mu r multiplied by n. Here f is the value of rolling resistance. Mu r denotes coefficient of rolling resistance and n is the normal reaction between the surface and the wheel. Let's assume a situation. You're traveling in your car. You're on an empty highway. There are no cars in sight whatsoever. So you flow the gas pedal of your car. The road is absolutely flat and straight. You keep driving at the car's top speed for quite some time. You check your fuel gauge and it shows that you're low on fuel. The car starts to jerk a little bit, so you quickly shift to neutral gear and leave the accelerator. Now you coast on the road without any external force driving you. Let's assume that all the values of friction between the components inside the car is zero. Let's also assume that the external aerodynamic drag on the car is also zero. Now that we've removed all the forces that could cause the car to stop, it should coast on the road indefinitely, right? Well, no. The car will eventually come to a stop, although the stopping distance would have increased. Why? Well, this is because of rolling resistance. Rolling resistance acts between the wheels of the car and the surface on which the car is traveling. Almost 4 to 11 percent of a car's fuel consumption is spent to overcome the rolling resistance between the car tires and the road. For heavy trucks, reducing the rolling resistance of the tires by just 5% can increase the fuel efficiency by 1.5%. This might look like a very small number, but remember, cargo trucks travel thousands of kilometers. So any small reduction in fuel saving will save the truckers a lot of money. The primary cause behind the rolling resistance of air-filled tires is the viscoelastic forces that occur due to change in shape. We'll explain that with an illustration. Let's assume you have a solitary wheel of a car placed on the road. The tire alone is not very heavy, so there are no deformations on it. Now, the weight of a car is placed on the tire. Well, what happens? The tire looks a little flat at the point at which it meets the surface. Now that the car moves forwards, the tire rotates. This causes the tires to repeatedly deform and reform with the rotation. These continuous deformations lead to a loss in the energy and inhibit rolling of the vehicle. You would have noticed this when your bike or car tires have very little air pressure. When the vehicle's tire has low pressure, more area of the tire will be in contact with the road. This in turn would increase the rolling resistance. On the other hand, if your tire pressure is much higher than the value prescribed in your manufacturer's manual, then your tires will be overinflated. Because of this, very little area of it will be in contact with the road. This reduces the total grip and leads to loss of traction. We'll take another example of a train on rail tracks for this. The wheels of trains are normally made of hardened steel. So the deformation that they undergo is very little and is negligible in value. Since their deformation is negligible, they shouldn't have any kind of rolling friction, right? Well, no. Rolling friction is not just dependent on deformations. It also depends on the type of surface an object is rolling on. The surface of the wheel and the surface on which it is rolling is not always smooth. No matter how smooth a surface appears to the naked eye, it will have microscopic irregularities on its surface. These irregularities are the reason why the wheel is able to impart motion and also why it loses a bit of energy. Many innovative technologies have been devised to eliminate rolling friction. One such technology is the magnetic levitation or the maglev. The maglev works by lifting the entire vehicle off the ground with the help of magnets and propelling it forwards. Maglev trains are known to clock very high speeds, as fast as 600 km per hour. This is partially made possible because maglev trains have no wheels. 
no wheels means no rolling resistance and all that saved energy can be used to propel the vehicle forward. Another common example for reducing rolling resistance in vehicles are economy tires. You would have seen advertisements of various manufacturers on the television stating that a few tire models of theirs are able to increase the fuel efficiency of your car. What these tires actually do is reduce the amount of rolling resistance between the road and the wheel. With lesser resistance, lesser energy is consumed. This means more efficiency. Well, that's it for this video, guys. We'll be uploading more interesting videos such as this. So until then, stay tuned and stay safe. We'll meet again in the next one. Bye.